how it works. Yay. <laughs> Yay. We are live, everyone. Hello. Yay. I have <laughs> I say Pris has dragged her ass out of the bed <laughs> for this. Um, hello, 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 hello. Um, oh, so as people are probably like starting to join in and things like that, Steph, do you want to introduce yourself just in case people don't know who you are and yeah. also what we're reading? Yeah, so I'm Steph. I'm from the channel Steph Loves. If you have seen me about on YouTube, hey. Um, if you haven't, please go and check me out. <laughs> um, and uh, we are going to be reading The Forest of Moon and Sword. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Forest of Moon and Sword. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really long title. I keep forgetting what the name it is. is. But I'm and really it's, one of, it's one of those titles where it's kind of, there's like a lot of it like that, you know, but it's mainly YA. So yeah. having a middle grade like that, it's a trip spoil. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I saw it on, obviously I saw you mention it in your TBR and I was like, oh, I wonder if that's on NetGalley. And I went straight on to request it and I managed to get approved. And I was like, yes. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad you got approved for it. Sometimes I, I get, I apply for something on NetGalley and it takes ages for me to hear back from them. So I'm really glad that they got back to you. Yeah. Uh, oh yay oh hi to australia sorry about yeah sorry about time zones and things that's always a bit of a bit of a weird one. Oh, uh so it's 8 p.m in australia oh nice uh, but hello good morning uh good morning danny oh time to go and grab a drink do you have a drink or anything with you steph i do so i've got just got a bit of water because you've got to be hydrated and Go i through. also have in last year's believe it on mug ah. <laughs> some fruit tea. <laughs> oh that looks nice now i've also got water as well because yeah hydrated yep good shout um oh hi natasha um yes continue with you can work during the sprints i mean you don't have to read you can work answer emails things like that so um Ooh, hi Rebecca, a uh, crazy person who gets up at 2 a.m. for no reason. Nice. Yeah, and kind of relate. In fact, probably I'm still awake. I, I think I'm still awake at 2 a.m. Uh, good morning. Oh, sorry, I jumped there. Uh, oh, from Australia as well. Uh, Catherine. Oh, Catherine. <laughs> hi, Lindsay. Hello, hello. Hello from the Netherlands as well. Nice. I love seeing Timo. Um, hello have my morning coffee good yeah as long as you've got something to drink with um i don't know what it is but i just love something about the morning when the sun's like it's up but there's still that kind of glow above yeah. the buildings if you know what i mean like looking out the window now i just see it just looks peaceful so and i feel a little bit like lorelei gilmore a bit so. <laughs> <a whole> mood. <laughs> oh. yeah, right it's like a whole mood uh oh 5 a.m on the east coast of the usa oh, wow. hello i'll have pizza for breakfast i did get a domino's pizza last night and i do still have some leftover so i might eat some yeah. up after hello heather hi amber <laughs> and i'll never shut up so <laughs> uh so yeah um forest moon and sword i might what because i also have it on neck alley um i might read that on my kindle um but we can start like reading at like 10 past or something for a bit um what have you been reading for believe a i know you've just gotten a vlog out as well so i've got steph's channel link down below i haven't had a chance to watch it just yet so no spoilers for the vlog but <laughs> I, do, <laughs> I do want to know like um what you've been reading so far um so i've managed one two three four five i have them with me actually i've managed five books so far wow that's um, incredible so <laughs> frost heart escape from aurora I'll not tell you what I thought of these books if you know. <laughs> um, Potkin and Stubbs, The Haunting of Pelican City. Nice. Uh, Gigantus. Oh, yeah. I mean, the Fang and the Unicorn Lords. I need this entire series because these are gone. Oh, I'm obsessed. Right. Honestly, like just seeing them all together, you kind of just <laughs> want to get two of each and then have the yeah. straight edges facing out and then the spine yeah that's I, I get that. a good idea <laughs> Wait, I, I would say a waste of money but it, it's a million <laughs> not necessarily <laughs> yeah. um and then sheets which is the graphic novel mm. i mentioned to you the other day as well so yes um it's funny you mentioned that because after that live um i got sent a couple of um graphic novels uh nice. one was called witch boy i think Ooh, um, around. It yeah, looks it looks it looks fantastic. Just yeah. from the cover alone, it looks great. And also El Defo, 
as well. Oh, I've got some half on my yeah. Oh, nice, nice. We might have to buddy read that one as well at some yes. point. Um, but yeah, that was from Amy. So thank you so much, Amy. Yeah, uh, nice. uh, Chris is reading Frost Out here right now. Oh, <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Like literally just, oh, oh Eleanor's um, opened a document to edit her work in progress. Nice. Mm. Uh, but uh, you can you can work on your work in progress during the sprints as well, so it's all good. Um, good morning, good morning. Uh, love Popcorn and Stubbs. Popcorn and Stubbs is a great series. So Saying that, I've only read the first one so far. <laughs> you got me excited for Amelia Fang. This sounds so they are fun. It's like yeah. easy escapism. Yes, definitely. And I love the illustrations as well. Laura's like oh. her talent is second to none. It's incredible yeah literally illustrate and write yeah oh, woman of many talents <laughs> yes <laughs> oh um hope you have fun at school today janice um reading pages in core two but only 30 pages left nice you'll definitely wow. get that done during the sprints and then yes. start pages in core three have you read uh, pages and core i haven't it's on my tbr actually this time around so i'm trying to read books from the authors that actually helped you out with the mm. lot, with the uh, tbr announcement so i uh, want to read their books but if it doesn't fit so for example i was reading amelia fang for the spilled ink one because obviously that was mm. laura's prompt yeah but there's no ghost in this one there's a ghost in the first yeah. one but not in this one so i ended up um putting sheets down for it but still reading amelia fang anyway so if the book doesn't fit in the end i will try and find another one so i might end up reading more than 13 middle grades this month <laughs> bless you I, I love how the dedication to that because I would have just like let you off anyway. Like I wouldn't mind it. It's like you, there's that sense like there's probably a ghost somewhere. <laughs> like, just like probably in the background. I don't know. But uh, yeah, bless you for uh, really sticking to to the rules. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have said anything. But <laughs> good morning. Our tea and hot water bottle ready. Reading Winter House two. In oh. a second hour, we'll probably do some study sprints. Nice. Nice a way to start the girl who drank the moon. House in Poplar Woods. Oh. I've not I've not heard of that one. No. It looks, but I feel like I feel like maybe Rebecca's might have tweeted it or put it on Instagram. I feel like the name is kind of familiar. I might have seen the cover. Yeah. Um yeah, I need to double check that. But it sounds great. I love the name. Spend a morning reading Wonder Smith. Ooh, I've four middle it. grade so far this month. <laughs> nice. Uh try and time I'm gonna try and time is so today that I will finish. Okay. <laughs> I'll pretend I understood it. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, loving the Midnight Guardians. Good. I'm glad. That's a great one. Great one to read. Uh, I'm doing an interview with Ross Montgomery, the author, on Sunday. So, I need to prepare for that one. I haven't even done any work for it. <laughs> Reading House of Chicken Legs Street after work as well nice. from Louise. And continuing the Crooked Sixpence. So, I'm glad you guys are reading all of the books for, for Believe a Thon. Um, the sprint we can start in two minutes time. How long do you think the first one should be? Mm. Um, probably like 20 minutes maybe. Yeah. Just to like grease the wheels kind of yeah. thing. Um, <laughs> I want to try, yeah, yeah, exactly. So I want to see if I can try and, I have ne I never used to do the share screen kind of thing. And then I went on the live with Molly and I'm like, oh, this is cool. Um, <laughs> so let's see if this works again. Does that work? There we go. Nice. <laughs> right, I, not that it's like a professional kind of looking timer or anything, because uh, I don't know how people do it, but people have like the online one, but it's just the timer thing without all of like the ads and stuff. I don't know how people like cut it down, but yeah. I just do. Yeah, I just do that. Um, but it's fun. I love this. this. Did you say this is your first live set? It is ever. Um, it's wild. I can't believe it. I'm like really. I'm a bit nervous, but I'm actually really excited as well. So yeah. yeah. Oh, don't worry. It's with it just being like reading. The only thing is like, um, yeah. Everyone lower your volume because it's gonna be. Doo -doo. Uh, <laughs> uh, the only thing is like reading. Uh, in front, like I found it weird at first to like read on camera because I just I want to talk and just I don't know. It feels weird to me. It still does, but that's the only thing. Like, yeah. 
just not feeling weird about it. <laughs> yeah, I did a um Instagram I did an Instagram live when I was doing Supernatural Fun last month. I just did one. And um that was like the first time I'd ever done one of those as well. It was good, but yeah, like like you say, it was a bit weird. And obviously because I was doing it on my phone as well, I didn't realise mm. how um it how you know cut off you end up being oh, yeah. because you you you're using your phone to do the live i was like I'm, i don't know what time it is i can't set an alarm to stop the sprint i can't do anything that's li literally what i did for the first instagram live reading sprint for believe the fun three i didn't even have my laptop on i was like i know all this i know i can't see the time why did i put my <laughs> laptop on i've got not i've got nothing to help so yeah that was that was uh that me but at least you know for next time yeah <laughs> So let's start the time. Um, how do I start it again? Do I click set? Oh, there, start. Okay, right, let's start 20 minutes and then we'll come back and chat about the books. <laughs> cool. Turn this down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <I can tell. laughs>
Ooh, that's tight, but for some reason the sound hasn't went off. I don't know why that is. I'm so glad that you just said that because I was like, oh my God, did I mute my computer by accident? <laughs> yes, yeah, same. <laughs> I was like, what's, what's happening? Why isn't the sound going off? I don't know why that, that happened, but uh, I'll just alert everyone. I'll try and keep an eye on that because that might still happen. Um, how, how did you do? How did you get on? I got to 11%. I'm nice. Nice. What about you? Uh, 15. Nice. Uh, um, but did you, uh, that swear word in the first chapter, I was a bit yeah. in what? I, I was, I thought that, I was like, is this a middle grade? What? <laughs> it should be, but I, that, I'm a bit taken back by the fact that it has a, the P word in the very first chapter. Yeah, oh my goodness, yeah, little... I'm seeing that though, it's six, 1647, isn't it? Is Was it a swear yeah. word back then or did it, me, did it mean what it means? I think yeah i yeah i think it means what it means but um i just think like even now like you're gonna get a kid that reads this and might start calling the toilet a people yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, i think it's, it's funny um uh, but i'm kind of liking it so far it's been a little bit hard hitting actually <laughs> like it's quite, quite dark, a, isn't like, it yeah quite grim yeah um which fits the like the the atmosphere of, of the book absolutely um, Singing so to say hi, sorry, you work right now. I oh, hope you have fun at work. Uh, do, 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 ba, ba. Oh, what I meant is that I will try and finish Frost Hall on the sprint saddle later today. So, again, we'll see my live reaction. Yeah, that's great. Um, Please yeah. do. Hi, Miranda. Hi. Oh, Molly's here. Hi, Molly. Good morning, Molly. Good morning. Hope you've got a nice brew. <laughs> uh, 13 pages non-fiction reads really slow pretty slow i don't read a lot of non-fiction i don't to be honest no 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 not our cup of tea uh, <laughs> 20 pages takes to page 100 nice landmark milestone to hit yeah 17 34 26 20 30 pages a pinch of magic nice. 29 pages eight percent 24 9 25 um with two chapters of popular words 14 pages 43 pages i'm so nice. glad Chris loves it like <laughs> even more than the first one good uh oh we've had well, actually uh first uh 22 now which is great uh 27 and now reading third pages in course so you must have finished the second one so i've had Ooh. a couple of what what are we reading uh molly we're both reading the same book uh, so just in case anybody uh missed the very start uh forest of moon and sword by Amy Raphael is what we're reading. It's yep. set in the 1600s. Um, a girl has her mother um, accused of being a witch and taken away. And I believe it's about her journey to find her and bring her back. Um, yeah, it is. It's she's trying to save her mother from the fate of the witch trials, but only nature to guide her way. And me and Steph are both reading this. We're buddy reading this. I don't know why I'm not reading the physical one because <laughs> the the format in the um in the Kindle one's all, a bit all over the place. Yeah, it's uh, a bit of a mess, isn't it? I think there's illustrations. Yeah. Obviously, you've got a physical arc there. I don't know if the illustrations are looking better in that book, but they are a bit of a mess, aren't they, on the Kindle one? They're kind of like they're still kind of small, but I know what you mean. Like there's there's all the cuts. Yeah. Oh, the cute. Yeah, <laughs> they are, aren't they? But like, yeah, I'm kind of yeah, and then each chapter begins like nice like that. Um, but i guess that does explain why but the spacing it's actually quite like big space it's got big spacing that's why it's reading kind of quick i guess yeah um so where was i up to 27 finished chapter six. Oh yeah not reading but the sprint times work well with the writing flow good nice. i did that yesterday um it was Jean, uh, Jean Bookish Thoughts and Tasman from T Books and Tasman. They were doing a writing sprint for NaNoWriMo on Jean's channel yesterday. Yes. Uh, I did try and get a bit of reading done, but I know like Ashley was there and she was like getting like emails done, work done and things. I do find um, it useful for that. Sometimes I might try and yeah. edit a video, you know, if it's like a longer sprint oh, yeah. hour, I'll try and edit a video in that time. And it just keeps me focused and off my phone because I, I will very easily get distracted if I'm editing so easily. <laughs> That's a good, oh my God, there should be like kind of like editing sprints or something. <laughs> you, you should start doing that. That's so <laughs> I know a lot of booktubers would need that actually. That's um, true. Yeah, sounds exciting. I love reading historical type books and sounds so, yeah, it's, um, 
it, it reads kind of historical. Like, um, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm too much ahead of you. But um, the are you up to the bit where they're at the church? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's like the whole vibe of it. I'm getting kind of. I don't know if you ever watched Salem, um, the like the witch show. No. It's such a good show. Oh, I love it. It's one of my fave fave shows. Um, but it's it's actually got Tamsin Merchant in it. Uh, she wrote The Hatmakers, which I'm loving. Okay. Um, she's in that show actually, and that's her debut middle grade. Nice. Um, and it's just it only ran for three seasons. It's short enough. I think it's on Netflix. Maybe it might not be on Netflix. It might be on Amazon Prime. I can't remember. It's on something, but I loved it. I loved it. It has that kind of vibe. That yeah. To be fair, it. I've actually been to Salem, and that has oh. like a full witchy vibe it's creepy as hell it has like a whole witchy vibe we went at night so everything was shut and it was pitch black but oh it does have the whole witchy vibe and i am getting that from this book it is very i know what you mean like it is very um witch trials-esque vibe yeah it's really good it's, the atmosphere for it is really good already so far yeah agreed um i hope there's like more detail and stuff as we go on because that's the only thing that's like kind of lacking at the minute. But yeah. I, I am I am feeling it just from like the general vibe of it. I am feeling it. Um, the plot of Forest and Moon and Soul reminds me of the Thickety. That was a good middle grade. I haven't read that one, but it yeah. sounds pretty good. Yeah. Uh, how was the reading of the doll books going, Gav? <laughs> well, I read a few in week one. Um, not the best. Definitely not the best. Being a mixture of like between one and three stars. I still have four roll doll books now left to read i'm just not looking forward to them so i've sat i was going to read them all in week one but i sacked them off i'm going to read them in the last week instead just because oh my god <laughs> like, seriously they're I not as good as i remember oh, i hope they don't make you slumpy oh i mean to be fair they kind of did a little bit and that's yeah. kind of why this week i'm reading like ox that i'm really excited for so it's kind of reinvigorating me yeah um so yeah it saying that they are quick and easy to get through they're not that like they're not they're not tough to get through you can like read them in one sitting and things which is good yeah but it's just the content of it it's just it's not that great not yeah. not that great and i'm gutted what? because i used to love his books when I was <laughs> what God. did you read james and the giant peach in the end mm. yeah I, I gave that one two stars i think it came out with two stars on coal pile it just not well one not a lot happened two the fact that there was like a lot of fat shaming anyway and three it's just i found most of it kind of offensive yeah. like not not just like the fat shaming but like just so much of the the dialogue and i'm thinking this is for kids this is not teaching kids which i know not all middle grade books or children's books have to teach kids anything yeah. they don't have to be didactic but like it's considering the influence of old doll and the fact that his stories always imbue a kind of message it's never well sometimes it's the right message but half the time it's not and it comes across in such a, a terrible way and you yeah. can feel that there was language like i was reading up on old doll because i was interested in it and there was a bit in the bfg that was rather racist so i was like i googled is old doll a racist and you know what? A lot of people said he was. A lot of people said he was. And you can kind of see that in his writing. And now I'm reading his books. I'm like, I can't unsee that. Yeah. So it's just, oh, it's it's painful because I used to love like Matilda and the witches. Like they, them two are like used to be my faves. But everything else, I can't, it's been a while since I've read Matilda and the witches now. So I can't remember if there was anything offensive in them. Um, I might have to give them a reread. But it's just his whole vibe is just I'm not vibing with it anymore. It's it, I've it's grown such up. a shame. Yeah, it's such a it shame. Is. I've never I didn't grow up reading Roald Dahl, so I haven't had like a child experience with him or anything like growing up reading them as a kid. But I think mm -hmm. I've been wanting to get like get a collection for my nephew for when he's older. He's only like five months now, but I'm trying to build a collection up for him now um, while he's a kid so that like, his collection's like vast <laughs> when he's older. Yeah. But I wanted to get the Royal Dial books and I was like, oh, I'll start collecting them now and I'll read them and see what they're like. And then I was like, ooh, really? And the only one so far that I've enjoyed is Fantastic Mr. Fox. And that's the only one so far that I haven't had a problem with at all. Yeah. Um... I read that one earlier this year as well, actually. I think I read that in April. Um, I can't really remember too much about it now. But uh, no, I just, 
it's a shame. It's a, I'm glad you were reading them first because it's kind of like filtering that and making sure that you're not passing something on that's going to be problematic. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing, like growing up, because I feel like children's books in middle grade has gotten so much better over time. Yeah. Like now you would get a much better and much well-written children's book than you would back then. Um, saying that there are like a few exceptions, of course, but I just feel like things would get slid under the rug quite a lot back then, especially the twits. That one is just all the way through is domestic violence. Oh, and God. I I feel like, yeah, and like even now, even when I'm working at like a bookstore and a parent gets the twits and he's like, oh my God, I love this one so much. It's hilarious. I'm just like, is it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I'm not going to, I'm not shaming anybody who does love the twits. Like if anyone's watching this and loves the twits, um, I just, I couldn't read it without thinking, oh my God, like, what am I reading? You know what I mean? It's just, oh, I couldn't, I could barely get through that one. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's still like people now, and it's fine if like you're a parent and you're like passing on role doll to your kids. Like I'm not shaming anybody who does that, but it's just like, I don't know. Like, I feel like a lot of the kids won't get it. Like all the stuff that I'm getting as an adult. So I'm not saying like, it's a bad thing to give them it or anything, but like, I'm just like, I wouldn't give them to my niece now, if you know what I mean. Like, yeah, I'll give her something better. I think this is the thing a little bit, isn't it? So the idea is that I would, um, Thomas would grow up with me sort of, or his mum and dad reading these books to him. And I just think to myself, I am not comfortable reading that book to him. So I'm not comfortable with him then reading it on his own several years later when he can read on his own. And I obviously he wouldn't get what I'm getting from it. He'd probably think it's hilarious but also I don't think it's good for him to think it's funny to go around fat shaming people or, yeah. you know, like, I, ju I don't know. And I just, I just found it really, really creepy. And I just sit there and I think to myself, like, um, cause I don't, I don't even know what age is, um, how old these books are. I don't know when Roald Dahl released these books, but I just think back to like other books that I really, really love that are, are like almost OG, you know, middle grade books, like Winnie the yeah. Pooh, for example. And it's just yeah. got, totally different vibe to it and I yeah. love I love Winnie the Pooh I've got Thomas's own collection I've got about four different sets of Winnie the Pooh books I just love yeah. Winnie the Pooh so much but it's just a completely different vibe it's giving way different lessons than what Roald Dahl is giving and I just think it's such a better vibe and like you say newer books that are coming out now the middle grade books that have been coming out the last like five or ten years it's just seem to be so much better than what maybe we were reading when we were kids and stuff so Hundred percent, yeah. And um, Roald Dahl would release his books, I think, during the nineteen sixties, all the way up to the nineteen eighties. And he died in nineteen ninety. Um, and a couple of books got released that year. Um, and to be, f not even to be fair, because like a lot of his earlier stuff is the most problematic. I think it was, it might be in the Witches and Billy and the Minpins that came out in the latter half of his writing career. And I can't, I just read Billy and the Minpins. That's one, that one didn't have anything problematic in it at all. In fact, it had okay. a really beautiful message at the end. And I was like, why couldn't all of Roald Dahl's books be like this? Why does it have to be a random, hor like horrible comment mixed in with all of this trying to be, you know, like talking about magic or talking about like how kids should be? Like seeing the twits at the very start, it's like, don't have negative thoughts because it makes you like because like it makes you ugly kind of thing so it's like it's telling people like to be kind like don't be ugly to other people and then you won't be ugly yourself and i was like oh my god that's like such a good like kind of way of putting it and then it just went into all this domestic violence i was like well it's kind of lessened the impact of that message there <laughs> hasn't it? because they're just being ugly to each other so it's like what was the point um so like there was nothing to be learned from that one but um yeah the latter ones but even the latter ones cannot touch winnie the pooh winnie the pooh has like some of the best messages and it's just it's so beautiful if you like it's one of those children's books that i feel like you should be able to pass on to your kids and be like oh my god like i don't know it's just there's something beautiful and wonderful about winnie the pooh that i don't know it just it brings so much joy <laughs> it does it's timeless isn't it it timeless yeah and i haven't actually read them since i was god, well i don't think i've ever read them myself i used to get read them to me when i was a kid i feel like i should probably reread them next year um, yeah, part of me that stopped me actually rereading roll doll is what stopped me because i i'm dreading reading something now i loved as a child and hating it 
I'm dreading it. Like, it ruins it. <laughs> Honestly, I think as an adult, as I've gotten um, older, because I reread Winnie the Pooh every year because I'm just obsessed. Yeah. And as I've gotten <laughs> older, I think I actually, it's really weird, but I relate to the characters so much more because obviously there's this whole thing about the fact that each of the characters seems to have almost like a mental health issue a little bit. So like Eeyore's got depression and um, Piglet's got anxiety and things like that. And honestly, as an adult now who does suffer with depression and anxiety, I do see that in the characters. And I think I just relate to them so much more and just, you know, the family vibes and the friendship and everything you get from it. It's just wonderful, so wholesome and just completely timeless. It will never, ever age badly, I don't think. Yeah, no, uh, I think you're right. I think you're right. I, I am going to give them a try. I will, I'll, well, a try. I've tried them before, but I'm going to give them a try as an adult, I think, because I think you're right. I think there's going to be some really important things to like take away from it. And it's it's one of those books that's probably aged better as it's gotten on I think rather really than has. regressed. Yeah. Um, so um, that was a <laughs> bit of a spiel. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, kind of. Um, Catching up on comments now. I uh, started late, but almost 10 pages read. Now, page 176, hoping to read, uh, at least read page 200 before bed. Oh, nice. 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 You should do. You should do. Uh, will the live stream be kept up on the channel? Yep, absolutely. So you can catch up if you need to. Um, you know, I was always pop booktube on in the kitchen to do dishes because I hate doing dishes. <laughs> yeah, very good. Um, oh, um, Rebecca wants to go to Salem so bad. When? How long ago was that? When you went um, I was a kid, so I was probably about mm, nine or ten years old. Mm. So it's like twenty years old, twenty years ago for me now. Oh, I hate doing that. It's not <laughs> <laughs> no, I get that. I was thinking, uh, today, I was, well this morning, early hours in the morning as I was awake, I was thinking about gosh, it's been twelve years since I left school. You know, I I do not <laughs> like I can't believe that. And when I think about some of my best friends, I'm like. We've been best friends for like 20 years, and I never thought I'd get to that point where I'd have been friends with someone for that long. Yeah. <laughs> not, not good. Oh, now listen to the ghouls of Hal Ferron script. I really want to read that book. Nice. Um, uh, um, <laughs> it be time to just DNF doll. I would. I got gifted a lot of them, though, so I kind of, I still want to see them through. I want to do a video on it as well, so if I read all of them, I might be able to, to talk about them all and say the problems with them and one side of that are good because I yeah. think I think still like Matilda and the witches while there are some problematic things about Matilda it's mainly to do with getting revenge on on adults that's the kind of thing um that came across poorly in Matilda uh, but it's not as bad as you know all of the like racism and fat shaming and um I don't think I've come across homophobia yet but we'll see about that or sexism no, no, there's just similar. like yeah, it's going to be embedded in the text in one of the books. I just know it. That I would be a really to... interesting video, though. I think I, I yeah. would sort of benefit from something like that. And I feel like other people would as well. So Hopefully. Fingers crossed if it's done well. I don't know. I may say that because I reread Charlie Chocolate Factory, Matilda, The Witches last year. I feel like I'm going to have to reread them again before I do this video just so I can see if there's anything else in them. Because I can't yeah. remember if I read anything problematic in them apart from Matilda. But other than that, um, oh, um, Rebecca says we read The Witches this year and surprised that it was considered a children's book. I don't know if maybe that's like the because it's scary or because there's things in it that's like not appropriate for children, which I wouldn't be surprised not to be yeah. honest. Uh, to do, um, <laughs> uh, pages and core to completed in form. Oh, yeah, if you guys can fill in the form when you complete a book as well, that'd be awesome. Uh, you t -t 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 I'm just getting sorry I'm getting through um okay so I've had a few comments about murder most and lady like which um you read as well yeah the first yeah the first book gosh we did have a full-on conversation about this in the middle grade monthly live show about the like racism towards um towards hazel and yeah, it, it it left such a bad taste in our mouths and like there wasn't really a, because they didn't learn from it by the end of the first book kind of thing. Like it just, it, it felt like it was brushed over. Um, I have read books two to five now and I can't confirm it gets so much like better. And I feel like, I don't know if it was like the author wanted to make a point in the first one that I didn't get 
because then in the second book and things like Daisy and Hazel are in a much better relationship. There have been apologies as well for the way Daisy's treated Hazel. But yeah, I think the first book, a lot of people aren't going to go get past the first book. And yeah, I think you're one of them, Steph. Yeah, I got 13 pages into the first book and just DNF'd it. I could, just couldn't go any further. It wasn't even just the racism. It was like the fat shaming as well of the teachers. And I mm -hmm. just couldn't. I just couldn't do it. I was like, I've, I'm 13 pages in, there's been a racist comment and some like three counts of fat shaming, I'm sure. And I was like, there's just no way I can even carry on with this. Because I knew Jade had already mentioned as well that the relationship between Daisy and Hazel wasn't great either. And I was like, oh, I just don't know if I can read it with that added into it as well. And I, I'm a little bit bummed about it really because I was really hyped about it. I love a good murder yeah. mystery. So I was, and I wanted to read a middle grade one. So I'm a little bit bummed about it. And if I, I wish I could force myself through it, but I don't want to hate read a book just for the sake of getting through it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I totally get it. Um, I'd already committed because I'd already bought most of the, well, all of the series really. Because I do this all the time. I buy the entire series and I'm like, yeah. well, crap. Um, but yeah, it seems <laughs> Danny and Pris are like, she wants to get back to reading. <laughs> uh, so we can start another sprint now if you'd like. Uh, should we do half an hour this time? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, um, I'll see if I can. Um, it, it's getting this timer thing to work. I, oh, I'll click back. Um, so clear and then 30 and we'll go back. Um, I did say something about a vlog. Um, I'm not having a week vlog coming, week one vlog coming, but I will have a week two vlog coming probably Monday or Tuesday, just to let you know. Anyway, um, let's start this sprint share screen application. There we go. That should be set now, yeah, yeah. And let's go, go, go. Fab.
perfect timing. Again, <laughs> the sound hasn't gone off. I'm going to have to find out why. <laughs> Change that, isn't it? Yeah. It's the first time that's happened to me. But anyway, how did you how did you get on that time? Did you um, get much read? 28% that time. Nice, nice. What about you? Uh, I'm on 37. Nice. Hi, Bye. Uh, uh, good, good. Um, a lot of kind of wandering around. There's been little bits of character interactions every now and then, a little bit of um, lore, kind of, yeah. like a little bit of folklore, a little bit we've done. Still, like, not as detailed or anything um, so far. It's just been wandering around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you feeling the same way? or? Yeah, a little bit. I am wondering when it will sort of, like, you know, like you say a bit more bit more detail and stuff but it's just it's not that long of a book though either is it i don't think it's just like 200 and odd pages i think yeah yeah it, yeah let me double check um because it is quite a shortish book yeah uh, well it says it is 270 but oh, okay. that's it the spacing of it though is like there's not really that many words on each page yeah. well, not you know what you would usually get in a middle grade it's like not as much so even though it says 270 it feels more like a 200 kind of yeah. page book getting through it way too quickly <laughs> <laughs> oh they're reporting from dallas texas hello nice. <laughs> oh and i'm glad popping and stubs and frost are two came that's good read eight pages of the other non-fiction book um yay i'm so glad i'm so glad it was productive we might do like another like 20 minute sprint in like 10 minutes or something just to like mm -hmm. round off um and then of course we'll we'll sprint to more some more tonight to do chapter 10 of ghosts of hellfire listening and working is good good nice. 50 pages from molly and wanted to stop at the end of a chapter i i'm the same way i i get I'm probably like halfway through, like halfway through one now. But every time I finish a chapter, I look up at the time because then I think if there's only like thirty seconds left, I won't bother. Yeah. Um, but it's like, yeah, I started the chapter. I was like two and a half minutes left, and I was like, I may as well continue. <laughs> Twenty-four pages. Good morning, Curry. Forty-three. Ninety-two pages by Pris, but Pris did start a little bit earlier because she's very rude. And yeah. She needs <laughs> 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 to be fair, it's Frost Hard too, so I'll let her off. Uh, read 12%, uh, two and a half chapters of Wondersmith read. Nice. 38 pages, got through 67 pages, the pacing has really picked up. Nice. 55, 22, 18%. Uh, came in at the end of the sprint because phone didn't give notification. Oh, bless you. Uh, it's <gasps> only 15 pages. It's fine. We've got another sprint coming up, probably 20 minutes, and then another one tonight. So, still time. Ooh, 300 words written of the essay. That's quite a lot for an essay, especially how long it would take me to re like write an essay. Yeah. That's good, man. In half an hour? Oh, that's, that's incredible. Smashing it. Smashing it, exactly. Uh, we're reading book three of Baker Wish, Isadora Moon, How to Train Your Dragon, and Eye of the North. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah, Isadora Moon, I wanted to read because that's a bit Amelia Fang-like. It looks um, so cute. I've had my eye on that one for a while. Same, but I'm just like... I'd need to be in a specific mood for it, so I might wait until next year because I still have, like, I think I'd compare everything to Amelia Fang if I read something like that. Yeah. So I'm just going to give it a bit of time, I think. Um, we are reading Forest of Moon and Sword, both of us. Uh, this is our middle grade historical witch trials kind of book. <laughs> oh, Cold and Sharon's people fought in a massive pile of washing, family fives so worth wow. And cleaned a slow cooker. <laughs> that was very productive. I love that. I love that you're using these sprints to do some productive, like for productivity. That's, That's good. Such a good idea. A very good idea. Uh, Tyrus Reading, a kind of spark. I'm loving it so much. I'm so glad. That's such a fantastic book. That's so much EBR as well. <laughs> yeah, I think you're going to love it. It's, like, it's just, you don't get a lot of own voices books for like disability rep or like autism rep or anything like that it's just so nice to get such a genuine authentic yeah. own voices book like that it's just oh, it's so good and such a fast read as well that's only about 200 pages long so good um, got to page 193 so seven more pages of thieves of we are wood to go before bed nice, nice. Let's have a go, done. um <laughs> yeah to be fair the size of the font on my kindle i've got like rather big because i love the feeling of turning a page 
on it so like it's kind of big so I'm keep doing that it just makes me feel like I'm reading faster yeah. I don't know if you do the same <laughs> yeah um oh three and on three chapters yeah I think you can finish in last uh tonight sprints um I was very productively asleep nice <laughs> 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 reading House Moon Castle and good morning, Mandy. Um, so, Steph, um, what is your favorite middle grade or children's book? Well, actually, it'll be Winnie the Pooh. Um, what is your favorite? <laughs> what's your favorite like middle grade book of the last like five years? I feel um, like just to learn a little bit more about you. Uh, so I've only been reading middle grade for probably about the last twelve to eighteen months. Probably since I've met you, to be fair. So, uh -huh. um, <laughs> uh, so I. Oh, that's a really good question. I'm looking at my shelves now. Um, <laughs> it's a hard one. It is a hard it, question. I just threw that at you. Probably, honestly, in all honesty, we'll probably say Frost Heart. It's so good. <laughs> it is isn't it it's just like it has that world building of something that you could have in like an adult fantasy and it's just but it's like in such a accessible way at the same time and yeah. oh, the illustrations as well it just it's a, a whole package it's a whole package i agree yeah. i agree i know you're not just saying that because i'm here <laughs> but it is just genuinely such a, a fantastic book and it's like the amazing. series in general you just know it has that potential and Oh, it's just going to be fantastic. I love that. Yeah, yeah I love that you mentioned I that. I finished Frost Heart 2 the other day and I actually tweeted about it, but I ended up screaming, swearing. I said uh, the F word <laughs> <laughs> and screamed and threw the book on the sofa. And I was like, what yeah. the hell? Yeah. And then tweeted about it and Jamie messaged back saying, I'm so sorry, by the way. I'm glad, I'm glad you enjoyed the book. I was like, yeah, I loved it. It was amazing. <laughs> But he knows what he did. He knows yeah. what he did at the he end there. What he did. <laughs> yeah. When I did a live reading sprint with Molly on, like, I think it was last Sunday, um, she was, no, it wasn't, it was the Sunday before. Uh, she was reading Frost Heart 2. She got to the end. I was live watching Molly reading the end chapter. So cool. And she was like, <laughs> <laughs> just the fact that we have to wait for the next one now. It's just, yeah. it's rude. It's very rude. <laughs> yeah. uh, to do. Oh, Fave uh, by Tamar's Letter for the King. Read that for the last Believeathon. I cannot shut up about it. I need to read it. You know what? I think I'm going to read, like, do a video or something where I read um, other people's recommendations for middle grade. But mm. I, at the same time, I'm scared of doing that because what if I don't like it? And I'm like, <laughs> I don't I don't want to offend anyone. Um, but at the same time, I, I generally love most middle grades. They don't often disappoint me. And I think that's just because I expect something different. You know, yeah. I, yeah. I think I, I tend to find I tend to give middle grade a bit more of a chance. So usually mm -hmm. I'm really, really harsh with my DNF in. And if I don't like a book within about the first 50 pages or so, depending on how long the book is, I tend mm -hmm. to DNF it. So um I'm pretty like cutthroat with my DNF in, but I don't tend to DNF middle grade. I think murder most only like is the only middle grade I've DNF'd. And I still even now, hate myself for it a little bit, but I just couldn't carry on. I'm in a mindset now where it's okay to DNF. I know I had like this whole stigma around it, like probably earlier this year, and I was like, every book I read, I have to read till the end. That's so daunting though, because when yeah. you think about the amount of books we have to read, and then if we don't enjoy it, as you said, like after the first like 50 pages, it, that's a good indication, I think. Um, and like I said, depending on the length, if it's like a 700 page book or something like that, I might give it a bit more. But now we have to be mindful of like what we read and how far, because if we read a whole book and it's a waste of our time, we've just wasted a whole book. So, yeah. And it's what it does to your mood after as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Ah, uh, oh, Steph seems really nice. She is really nice. Uh, and <laughs> Steph, yeah, Steph will be here in, it'll be five and a half hours now for the next one. Although we'll do another one in like five minutes or 20 minutes and then talk for five minutes at the end. Um, so we've got people saying like Nevermore is like their favourite. Um, yeah. Nevermore is fantastic. Nevermore and Keeper of the Lost Cities. I read the first Keeper of the Lost Cities. I liked it. I But I know it's a series where I think it's going to get better as it goes on. And I think a lot of people's least favourite in that series is the first book. So right. I just need to give the rest of them a try. Um, so I know Pris has been absolutely loving it. 
and <laughs> raving about it. So I, I will. Bought it since because of Pris. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's been a huge advocate for it, actually. Yeah, really. <laughs> uh, just read first time shot in top five of all time. This makes me so happy, guys. <laughs> love, love the vanishing tricks. It's such a good one. Um, yeah, Jimmy Little did post about Frost Three this morning. He's gotten through the first draft of it, although he says it's like the he's done like a 0.5 draft, a 0.75 draft. He's done a lot of drafts apparently. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my fave changes every week. Honestly, can't decide. I need to say, you guys, this is now on Neck Alley as well. The hat makers, it's on Neck Alley. You have to request it. It is so far. I am loving it. I've only got like sixty pages left. So I want, I, I want to keep this for the second sprint and i'm going to end up reading this i think um during the time between and finish it loving it this is beautifully written gorgeously written but it's on neck alley guys do do request it and read it because i'm loving it i'm loving Go it straight to neck alley after reading sprints to request yeah <laughs> please do the, the sooner you request the sooner you'll get it uh oh favorite standalone is a girl who drank the moon favorite series is never know that's a good that's a good uh, shout actually like yeah. a standalone over a favorite series because to be honest standalone wise mm, probably like for me like wild spark by vashti hardy maybe um <laughs> oh, such a good one such a good <laughs> one um Eye of the North by sinead O'Hart. things like that um but it's hard because every single time i read a book a middle grade book there's another one coming like the ship of shadows i thought was going to be like one book there's actually going to be more so i was yeah. like oh then like now i can't say it's like one of my favorite standalones because it's going to be a series so i don't know if i i haven't read many standalones to be honest i think maybe yeah. for me it might be um the girl who speaks bear by sophie anderson mm. or <laughs> i love that book love or, it. um i cosmo which is a really good uh, one. I can't remember the name of the author though. Is it Kaylin? I can't see the name. It's, of the author it's name. Carly Sorosiak. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. I really enjoyed that one because I've got a golden retriever and I've grown up with them since I was like oh. literally born. So, and I'm always yeah. sat there wondering, I wonder what they're thinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I say him actually. Um, but like she's done another one about a cat. And I'm looking forward to reading that one because it's a oh, bit more sci fi. Because yeah. it's a cat coming from space or something. Oh, it's nice. like an alien cat. Yeah, but it sounds it sounds great. I'm looking forward to reading that one. I know I wasn't the biggest fan of iCosmo, but I still gave it three stars. It was only because I don't read a lot of books like that. And it, I'm more fantasy kind of thing. And I again, I'm more of a cat person as well. So, like, if you've grown up with a golden retriever, if you love dogs, yeah. it's like the perfect book for you. <laughs> um, anyone can sign up to Neck Alley. Yeah. Um, I, it does depend on like getting approved by publisher though i know that some of them can be quite strict um also i'm not telling you my thoughts on amari because i have finished it and i'm going to let you guys know on the vlog but yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it for that uh to, to, right we will read in a second i promise um but i do yeah i will definitely be leaving this video up all of the reading sprints will be up Ooh, dnf the expo by Catherine rundle it Ooh. wasn't what i expected by the end of it to be honest i still read it and enjoyed it but it wasn't what i expected i gave it three stars i preferred the rooftoppers actually i still need to read that one i've heard really good things about that one it's good uh, yeah um uh what is your opinion on harry potter it's a bit of a heavy topic <laughs> we'll probably save that for maybe the next sprint yeah we can talk about it in the next sprint um but yeah, if you're back for the next sprint, or you can always catch up on it, we'll we'll talk about that. Um, but yeah, uh, oh yeah, I'm the same stuff. I would love to be able to speak to my dog. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> I think it would be really cool to speak to your animals, your little fur babies, yeah. just to see and just to know what they want as well. Because half the time, they meow. Well, Suki meows all the time, and I never know what he wants, and he can't make his mind up. <laughs> uh, so let's do a last 20 minutes sprint. That will bring us to 57. We'll see our goodbyes. We'll come back tonight. Um, or should we say 15 minutes and then talk for a little bit at the end? We'll say 15. Yeah. Um, we'll end on 15. And then we'll have a bit more time to talk in the end. So share screen. Da -da -da. Honestly, when, when you get the hang of this, Steph, you'll be obsessed with doing... <laughs> Doing a live, I really live enjoyed readings. it so far. Actually, I'm excited for later's as well. Yeah, and I feel like we'll be getting like a lot more further on with it. We might have a bit more to discuss about it, and just talking all of all things middle grade. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> right, so let's 
Uh, let's go, go, go.
all done. Yes. I say that was a very successful sprint. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm now 48% in, which is not too bad. Nice. 36% for me. <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, are you going to be reading anything during the like time between now and later on? I think so, yeah. I'm doing Galliathon this week. So this actually this middle grade fits in nicely, obviously, because it's on net galley. Um so I've got I'm part, I'm like 70% through home before dark. And I've yeah. also got net galley arcs that obviously I never got to of um hollow pox and the castle of tangle magic. So if I finish home before dark, I'll pick one of those up as well. Are you liking home before dark? Because I think I saw on your tweet that it was the one that you are least excited about yeah so basically i requested it and then it came in really really late it only came in about a week and a half ago and obviously it came out like last month i think it was or the beginning of this month um so it came in really late and i think i just got carried away with the hype i do this all the time and i'm like yeah. why did i even request i don't even like horror what is wrong with me <laughs> yeah so, but so far i'm enjoying it. it's really good actually very cleverly done um so yeah i'm enjoying it. it's good can't read it at night though so i need to finish it this afternoon <laughs> yeah yeah best to do it when it's a bit later outside i definitely hear you uh yeah what time is the sprint later it's in five hours time i'm gonna do i want to set it up and then i'll tweet it out uh, once this uh live's over and then you guys can set a reminder if you'd like um read eight pages in my other jules phone book and now going to make lunch nice um oh and good night lisa Good night. I wouldn't mind that myself, to be honest. <laughs> 28, 21, 26, with only 40 odd pages left. Nice. 10, 59 pages, over 300 pages in now. Nice. Excellent. Oh my God, Pris, you will finish it tonight. You will yeah. finish it. 82 pages of a graphic novel, 21 pages of Tamarind and the Star of Ishta. Really enjoying a book from a different culture. Nice. I really can't wait to read that one. It looks so good. Looks I'm so getting good. so many recommendations. I haven't heard of half of these books. <laughs> I know, and this, they'll always look so beautiful. The plot summaries always sound so great. And you're like, there's about a million that you'd want to get, but it's, just, <laughs> it's hard, hard to do, hard to yeah. do. Not enough time in the world, not enough money in the world. Uh, 13%, 26. Oh, good night, Emily. Good night. Uh, a chapter, nice. Uh, oh, I'm glad you enjoyed, Natasha. Me too. <laughs> Uh, 4% and now 22% into The Girl with the Whispering Shadow. It's the second book in the Crowns of Croswold mm -hmm. series. Oh, I think I would. That sounds good. Sounds like a good series. Steph might love it as well. Yeah, I have the first one on NetGalley again. Another NetGalley I could get to. <laughs> ah, nice. Uh, yeah, you have through under Smith now. Good. Uh, oh, good. I'm glad we helped you keep motivated. And Pris is going to read some more in a bit and make sure she has around 100 pages left for tonight. Yes. Well, yeah, I think I'm going to read The Hat Makers and finish that off because I do only have about 50 ish pages left of it. Nice. Want me to see how that ends. And yeah, that's that's my plans, really. Not really much else that I'm doing, I guess. Um, Pop and make food. I might nip down to my local Costa and get. Have you tried the purple one, Latte? Have you been to, to Costa recently? No. Oh, it's like, you know, the purple one from Quality Streets. It's like that. It tastes a bit like that. It's like, it's just, it's sweet. <laughs> it, but it tastes so good. Nice. It tastes so good. I and don't I'm good at it. Yeah, I don't drink coffee and it makes me really sad. And every year when all the festive coffees come out, my brother gets them. So like caramel latte or whatever it is. And I'm like, can I try it? And he's like, you won't like it, Steph. And I'm like, I'm going to try it anyway. And he, I'm like, yeah, you were right, Matt. I don't like it. <laughs> it's the I don't know. How, yeah, I, but I don't know how you get got through uni without it. Because like I had like 15 a day or something, or 15 <laughs> coffees a day. In fact, I didn't used to drink coffee until... I went to, I, I went back to college and then yeah. I started drinking coffee because of like the stress of college work. So I don't I don't know how how you got through all of that without it. I don't Cans of Monster were the solution. Oh, <laughs> and fair. lots of heart palpitations to follow. It was not good. <laughs> <laughs> I think you don't drink monster anymore. No, definitely not. <laughs> yeah. I was always worried about drinking like Red Bulls and stuff. I would drink them every now and then, but I was always worried about the, yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, so I'm glad this also helped Lindsay pick up a book. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also glad this way for our students. I should do more like early morning ones. It's just getting yeah. me out of bed, really. <laughs> uh, next life is 3 a.m. Uh, trying to read for, for 48 hours to hopefully make it. Oh, hopefully you're well rested as well. Have a break as well, <laughs> if you can. Uh, to do, uh, to do, oh, going across the later. Yeah, uh, if you want to try that purple one, Lanny, if you drink coffees, I would recommend. Uh, to do, so yeah, oh, the the after eight hot chocolate as well, also amazing. That sounds that amazing. Is, I actually do like hot chocolate, so That's I good. might have to try that one. <laughs> That's you'll try. There's also a chocolate orange one, which nice. sounds nice. Oh my god, I want to try them all. Anyway, <laughs> uh, thank you so much everyone for tuning in. A uh, huge thank you to Steph as well for joining me. I do have Steph's channel linked in the description box, so do check out Steph's channel as well. And yeah, uh, catch you guys in the next one. I will put the link on for the next one on Twitter as well. I'll set it up and then you guys will see. You guys mm -hmm. will see and join in if you can. But yeah, that was fun. Thanks everyone. And thanks thank Steph. You. Bye. Bye, bye everyone. <laughs> bye. It takes ages. It takes <laughs> ages.